Hey everybody and welcome back um, to another Phenomenal Sir live stream of Rings of Power. So that is loud. Um, if you saw my earlier stream, you know I was in the middle of doing a um, Journey to the Savage Planet and then all of a sudden the game just gave up on life. So I decided that with the time I had left tonight I would just spend a little bit of time playing Rings of Power. Um, which is an amazing game. And with that being said, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so to play this game, we're going to go into Sega Genesis Classics Collection, and it's going to look like we're playing Comic Zone, but we're not because we are going to play the Rings of Power mod. And honestly, in the future, I should probably just wait and have you guys start on this screen, right? Wouldn't that make more sense? Um... I'm new. I just started streaming about 18 hours ago. So, or no, I guess it's been 24 hours now, hasn't it? 26 hours, something like that. Whatever. I have no clue what I'm doing yet. Um, in the future, it'll look a lot better and be more professional, I'm sure. But for now, just enjoy this funky adventure with me as we set off trying to make a friend for our sorcerer buck. And I'm going to have to use quick load because the saving doesn't work in this because it's a mod. So, boom. We're back in the city of Division. If you were here last time, um, our master Thalmus was brutally murdered by a level one sorcerer. Um, not sure how that happened, but it did. And I was forcefully teleported to a nearby city, and I am now trying to seek out Thalmus' friend, Hack. Um, and here we go. This guy looks important. So, you're the young sorcerer with Almas was telling me about. His death only proves the urgency of your quest for the rings. I guess that's hack. I'll give you an opportunity to prove yourself to me. The Black Priest... I can't do the voice. I am startling. <laughs> Black Priest Scourge stole the key from the chest which holds our symbol. If you get the key from him and bring the symbol to me, I will help you. Ask about your quest at the night guilds in town to learn Scourge's whereabouts. Find the key, then go to our treasury and get the symbol. When you have it, bring it to me and I will let Slash join your quest. And this is going to be a recurring theme in these first few quests, which, by the way, um, because I had somebody ask me this off, off stream, it is not actually required to do anything in a specific order. Um, if you want to, and I've actually done this before, you can just start getting rings right now, but... The reason you want to try and get your full party assembled is because A, some of the rings dungeons require some pretty significant combat, and B, that combat doesn't actually get you a lot of experience points. So like level 1, you need 100 XP to get to level 2, but then the number keeps doubling, so it goes 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and I think 9 is the maximum level that you can get to. Um, so, that being said, uh, the bandits that attacked me last go-round, if you've seen that, that episode, um, are a fairly weak encounter. I had no chance against them because I had just started playing. But those bandits, if you actually did win that fight, is only worth like 3 XP per person. Um, combat is not how you level up in this game. You really have to just complete quests and get items. Um, I think that every time you hear that little don da da that I got when I talked to this guy, that that counts as XP. Um, I know every time you get a character and every time you get a ring unlocked, uh, you get one. And I should go inside so I don't get ganked while I'm running my mouth. Um... The game is going to send me in a specific order, and I'm going to have to do a lot of walking back and forth on this continent. Um, and then there's a separate continent down to the to the southeast across the ocean from here, um, where most of the rings are. So they d divvy it up fairly well. Um, the game wants you to go in a specific order of your characters. I'm probably not going to do that. I'll tell you what the expected order is, but I find that it's best as soon as you get Slash get the necromancer even though you got to do some back and forth um backtracking you got to get the necromancer as quickly as possible because a he's fucking awesome 
he's one of the best characters in the game, not only because he does a ton of damage, but he's also the only character that can heal your party. And healing is extremely expensive um, if you're trying to go to inns and buy food or, or drinks, or if you're going to the temple. It is extremely cost intensive, so it's better to just have the necromancer constantly healing your party members in battle and not have to worry about that. So. That being said, our first objective is that we need to gather the source or the knight symbol and then show it to the leader of the knight's guild. And this is going to be a recurring theme as we unlock all of our party members. We're going to have to get the different classes symbols and then show them to either that class's leader or another class's leader, basically as a sign that everybody's in cahoots, right? Like which is weird because all the guild masters are presumably all working together on this project but they still need proof like they don't trust each other um so this is an interesting little quest it gives you a chance to get the feel for like going around and talking to people and getting information and kind of the flow of it at the end of it i'm going to tell you what the shortcut is which this is probably going to be the first time since i was a little kid that i've actually done this quest the legit way but i want you to see what's expected which means i might die a few times but there you have it <clears throat> so here we go he said check around the knights guild so the knights guilds are these big buildings with the um double cross thing i think it's supposed to be like a sword so hey buddy and i'm gonna ask him i can't remember what he said he wanted me to ask him about i think it was city our products are our trained guards and our fine blades if you have weapons to sell we will buy them well that wasn't it then class He's talking about how knights, the knight's philosophy quest. I don't know where Scourge is hiding, but Rashid, the wandering merchant, may be able to help you. He mentioned that he saw a black priest slithering away from the Guild of Pieces just the other night. I don't know where Rashid is, but he leaves his whereabouts with friends at the light with friends with friends, the lighthouse keepers. A boat from the Vehicle Master can take you there. Okay. So we're going to save. And we're going to have our first little experience with a Vehicle Master. First, I'm going to rob this man or woman. It's a woman. This one just sells a dino. Okay, so we're going to go to the other one. Part of the reason I'm doing this the legit way is because I wanted you guys to see what the legit way looks like and then see the shortcut and be like, wow, that's pretty obnoxious. Um, but I also realized as I was thinking about it earlier that this is actually a good opportunity for me to make a chunk of money. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So we can buy a ship. Well, we can't buy a ship. When you, pay, when you pay for a ship, you don't actually buy the ship. You book passage on the ship. And then you actually not only do you use resources, you also use gold to get around. Um, and then the ship has a little raft attached to it. So like the ship can only go in deep water. So if you need to go up a river or something, then you actually have to like get into the raft from the boat. Um, being in the little boat, you use a lot of resources when you're sailing and you're more at risk of being attacked. You're probably gonna see me get killed by pirates at least once before I finish this quest. Um, <clears throat> but the ship, even though it uses fewer resources, if you run out of gold, they'll just kick you off the boat and they'll just set you adrift in a little raft. Um, so we're going to buy a boat for 112 gold and this is our boat and it'll stay ours forever. However, if you don't mess with it for too long, I'm not sure if there's a set time or if it's random, but eventually it'll just say like somewhere in the world one of your vehicles has been lost <laughs> so you'll, your stuff will just despawn after a while hello i'm the lighthouse keeper it's always nice to meet a sorcerer okay so ask her about quest she's just talking about the temple city I know how to get into the Guild of Pieces treasury, the same way you get my fellow lighthouse keeper across the harbor to talk. Coins. I 
Okay, so I got to bribe the other one. And this is true, by the way. If you go in, like, you have to get into the treasury with the knight's key to open the chest with the symbol in it. But there's a lot of other chests in there that you can take the treasure from. And you can actually just bribe the, um, there's no lighthouse keeper over here. You freaking liar. There's nothing in this chest either. Um, you can actually bribe the guard to just get him to let you in just so that you can rob all the chests. But every time you do it, it's going to like affect your standing with the people in the town. Rashid is away at his favorite oasis, restocking his fresh water supply. I'm not at liberty to tell you where it is, though. Not for free, anyway. I know where it is, but I'll play along with her. Psst. The oasis is to the west of the vision. Take your boat and hug the north wall of the city, heading west to the corner. Work your way south and then west into the islands. His oasis is on the big island. Use your map if you get into any trouble. When you find him, ask him about your quest. Make sure to question him a couple of times. He holds out. Okay. I haven't bribed that person to help me since I was about 10 years old did not remember how quickly she just rolled over on her buddy there. Oh, it's dark, so we're going to camp. Because, remember, those from whom you steal will bear you ill will. Um, save. And just to illustrate what I was talking about, so food and water is 9372-11189. And we're going to follow her instructions. We're going to head on the map. This is the map, by the way. I never showed it to you. This is where we're going. This little blue square in the middle of this area. So it's kind of like a little maze. Um, and this is actually the town that we started in, is the city of Mind. And just for fun, I'm going to show you if this works. I'm hoping it works. This is a pulled out version of the entire world map. Um, so when you look at this, in the exact center of the map, you can kind of see that's the town we're in right now. And then it's got the little um, the desert bit up above it and everything. And then there's that, that's the city of mine. So you can see these two towns are a really tiny chunk of the world. And the world wraps around on itself. So if you just travel all the way west, eventually you'll pop up on the bottom right-hand corner of the map. So this is a big world for a Sega Genesis game, something that came out in 1991. It's 30 years old, and the world is huge. So anyway, I just wanted to take the chance to show you guys that, just so you could get a sense of how crazy large the world is. Hopefully that picture showed up. If it didn't show up, then I'm going to sound crazy um, if you're watching the stream. But you can go in deep water or shallow water. You do want to kind of hug the shallow water in these little boats because they're not very resource friendly when you're uh, in the deep water and while we're over here I'm gonna show you guys another little secret and I'm gonna also do some trade good work is this this is the I refer to my map again here okay so see I've already overshot it but that's okay that little blinking dot is where I want to be and this is mine so I'm gonna go here first, I'm going to have to do a couple of trips here. So I'm going to talk to this guy first. Um, deep bark. The endless desert is broken here by a small oasis. Here's our boy. Greetings, traveler. My name is Rashid, and I am a merchant from the City of Commerce. I come to this most lovely oasis to get fresh water. And then he just jumps right into the evil guy shit. The dry wind of void blows strong out here in the desert. If you die of thirst, only the sand will eat your bones. Alright, brother, brother. What do you sell here? You sell food and water at 25% more than the normal cost. What will you pay me for things? He does not pay me a lot of money for things. What a butt. I was thinking that I... Never mind. I was thinking that he would give me the same crazy prices that the traveling merchant did, and I could just sell him all these gems, and then immediately go over to mine and load up and just fill up my money right off the bat. But I guess they thought of that. Thanks. Thanks. I'll give you two. I meant to ask you quests, but I bribed you instead. I don't know about any rings, but I heard about this pirate who hid a magic sextant in a cave behind a waterfall. 
It's just west of Cathedral. So you guys remember I was talking last time about there's a sextant and you could totally not be paying attention or just not pay, not care about this at the time. We're like two episodes away from getting this. So this is like a good hour in the future, hour and a half in the future that we'd be getting this. It's just west of Cathedral. We have no time for Nexus and his temple. He is a sniveling child with a toy that his parents should have kept out of his reach. All right, brother. Quest again. Um, do I have to ask him about? I trade desert supplies. Once I was a normal city merchant, but I became lost in a desert far southeast of here. Just before I was to die of thirst, I found a great city atop a giant mesa. The sultan of that city, may he live forever, took me in. They are very advanced there, with a capital A. That's important. Things move swiftly and with great force in the desert. My guards come from there. So I'm asking him everything multiple times and he ain't telling me where I need to go. Brother. Well, so I don't know if I did something wrong by bribing him first or what, but I'm now out 30 gold and he didn't actually tell me where to go, but we're gonna pretend like he told me where to go. Um, or I'll just get attacked by a dragon and die. So that's an option too. Yeah, fuck you. Um, I am still gonna show you the other little secret though since I'm over here. So if you recall from an earlier chapter, I was talking about the crazy people telling you about, um, oh, that was a boat. That might've been, for all I know, that might've been a, um, it might've been a merchant. It was a merchant. That was a really lucky save. All right, I guess I am going to make some money. He's Look at this. Food, 24 gold. You are absolutely mad, sir. I will take your obscene amounts of money for my gems, though. Crazy boy. The uh, maximum gold you can carry is 16,000, I think, um, which sounds like a lot, but you actually can only... You, you end up spending a fair amount of money for spells and things. Um, let's see how my goods, my food and water is looking. Yeah, so I used a good chunk of food and water there. Um, I wonder if this guy still remembers me bribing him before. He does not, and the prices have gone up since last time. Hmm. Yeah, he charges more now. That's probably because um, I'm out of the intro. But I'll still bribe him. Thanks. That dropped it down to normal. Okay, we're good. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, All right. And then we're just gonna we're gonna buy as many freaking gems as I can and just load up. Can I hold it? No, I can't. Ah! I guess in theory I'm gonna need to spend sixty three hundred and thirty six gold on all this, right? Oh, you know what? Actually, I think that if you max out, it'll still let you keep spending your money. No, okay. Ten. I need to buy ten more. Yeah, it'll let you it'll let you spend money and you can't because 99 is the max and it just let me buy. So see there you go. I'm up to I'm up to about even on food and water. I'm very panicky about food and water. So we're going to quick save. So that's the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to come back here and load up on gems. Ooh. Are you also a 
No, you're not friendly. <laughs> when they chase you like that, they are not friendly. He was coming for my booty. So the other thing I was talking about was the um, the crazy people tell you the coordinates. They give you the different coordinates, and it just looks like a bunch of numbers, random gobbledygook. But one of the coordinates they're referring to is actually right here. And this is the treasure chambers that I was talking about. And just like every other area in the game, these treasure chests will respawn. They will refill occasionally. So, yeah. I don't know if you ever get, um, I can't remember if you get trade goods from this. Oh, you do, okay. Two bomb, that's good. Bomb, I, I got one bomb before. Bomb will refill your party's HP. And then there's mana that refills your, your blue bar that you need for spells. Um, Balm is more important because there's actually a couple of... Ooh, a crystal. That's nice. Um, there's actually a couple of areas that you just bleed health. One jewelry. That's pretty good. I think they're worth a, a few hundred gold. Um, I know specifically one of the rings that we're going to get much later in the game, as you're walking, you actively bleed out health, and if you're not paying attention, you can just die. And there's also another area that um, is booby-trapped, and if you're playing it the right way, which I don't think I've ever actually finished the temple the right way, you're fine. But if you want to do it the not-stupid way, then you just essentially have to have some healing items and just book. So. But we've gotten some good items here, and we still got the whole inner bit to go. Five books. <clears throat> books don't sell for a lot, but I'm not going to say no to any free... Yes! I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter now, because we've got 99 gems, but the corpses... Corpses are just good for quick money, and we're actually... The next town we're going to explore is where you want to sell the corpses, so this is the perfect time to be getting them. Lottery tickets, nice. Lottery tickets are basically just a consumable item. When you use them, the game will just randomly decide, do you, yes, flags we need to. The, the lottery tickets, you actually can play like a lottery mana, nice. Um, and you have a chance to win like 100 gold or 1,000 gold or whatever. Um, we're getting some good stuff here. Flags are needed for a quest later. Normally, to get a flag, that's another good item. We're going to save again. I'm not going to reload, and I'm not going to abuse this. Like, I'm going to try not to come back and keep reopening this, but I am going to search it once while I'm here. Um, Dragonstone's nice. Flipstones are nice. Um, I'm getting a lot of stuff that I'm actually going to need later. The flags, normally, you there's going to be a point in the game where we need five pirate flags. And the only way to get pirate flags is to fight pirates. And pirates are a random encounter that is not actually a whole lot of fun. Um, they can mess you up pretty quickly. They're actually one of the nastier fights that you run into as a random encounter. Um, so to have to like just drive around and hope that you get attacked and then fight five groups of them is pretty crazy. So anytime you can find flags in a treasure chest, that's like, oh, that's one of the you think they're useless because... I'm just going to run away. I'm not even going to fuck with this guy. Um, you think they're useless because when you go to sell them, they're only worth like four gold each or something crazy. But they're they're like a quest item that's not really a quest item. So uh, we're doing good, guys. Like, we're actually set up. I'm glad I came this way. Um, we've got some Fanini, which sell for a ton of money. Um, they're like a thousand gold each. Corpses are a couple grand each, and then we've got 99 gems, which, you know, any town is going to pay more than I paid for those gems. They're going to all pay more than 64 gold, but if I find a wandering merchant or if I go to Cathedral, I can sell them for a lot more. Um, let me make sure I didn't go too far. Run in my mouth. Yeah, we're right on target. And we're going to pretend, like I said, I don't know why Rashid wouldn't tell me where the, um, the bad boy is. That's a merchant. Hey, come back. Come back. I can't keep up with them. Their, their boats are way faster than this boat. Okay. So now we're going to look and see. Yeah, I, I burned through 3,000 water on that voyage. So just keep that, keep that crap in mind when you see me buying 
a hundred units of water at a time. That's one unit is a hundred. Like, so every time I buy water, it's actually like a hundred water. And I just burned through a quarter of my water just going from there to there. Um, because it was all deep water, I was running my mouth. I wasn't really paying attention. So, camp. Made camp till dawn. We quick saved. <coughs> so this is where I was supposed to go, guys. Um, before, when they were talking about, I heard, I saw the, the priest slinking around outside the Temple of Nexus. Um, that was your clue. You can actually start this quest and then immediately just go here in front of the temple. And there's a sewer grate. Okay? So I know I just saved, but I'm going to save again. And that's, that's all you have to do is like, you can skip that entire thing I just did just by going there and going down here and then hoping you're strong enough to kill this effort. All right, I'm not strong enough to do Jolt yet. That's one more level I think and I can do it. So he's already got an advantage on me because my, oh. I think there's something wrong with the mood alterer here because it seems like they're getting yeah yeah so see like that fight i almost died and that was like a boss fight by rings of power standards 17 xp that's not nothing um yeah one more hit and i'd have been dead quick save um Interesting trick. It doesn't always work. There are some areas that are locked, but generally if you're in a place like this and you just use camp, it'll take you straight back to the menu, which you're actually going to, and you'll get some health back. You're actually going to see me do that in a little bit just to avoid a couple of boss fights, um, which is a legitimate strategy. So now we've got the key and we're going to head on in. We don't even need to talk to him yet because... Oh, actually, I do want to talk to him. I want to show him the key. Oh, well, fuck me, I guess. Um, I'm going to steal from him one time. I don't know why I just did that. I think it's just because I'm a greedy SOB because I literally have, like, unlimited money at this point. Um, but working our way through the castle. And this is... This is the guy that... If we wanted to, we could bribe him, and he would just let us in, and we could open all the chests, except the one that needs the key, obviously. But if I show him the key, he also lets you in, and you don't suffer a negative penalty to your reputation, I don't think, for the first time you open these treasure chests. Blades. Blades aren't too exciting, because they actually sell those here. That's the trade good for... And then this back corner chest is the night key. We got it. Okay. We're not going to talk to him again because he's just going to say, Hall, two goes there. He just goes back into his normal stuff. <clears throat> Alrighty. <clears throat> now we're going to show him this. And that was that was Slash over there with the green shield. Um, you're going to notice that they, again, they the enemies and the standards are going to look pretty much always the same. And then there's going to be like a palette swap for your main characters for the most part. Um, with the one exception being, I think, Alexi, the conjurer. The other conjurers all have their, they all wear, like, they look like the, um, the red priests, but they're wearing white robes with their hoods up. And Alexi has her hood down. Um, but other than that, it's usually just a color swap for a couple of things. Uh, take a look at this. Good job, Buck. Young Slash would like to join you. Although your party is now larger, you'll need a few more to make a good, strong team. Seek recruits among the archers in speed. Many swords to the west. Also, go to the temple and ask the priests about your quest. They'll give you some guidance. Goodbye and good luck. Knight symbol lost. All right, so now we've got a new party member. Um... Slash is of the order of Stabber, and he is in peak form and feeling full of vigor. And he only has 50 XP, so he's going to start at level 1. Um, no, I don't need to talk to you anymore. I will literally never need to talk to you again. So. Alrighty. So, 
now we're going to see if we can do a little bit to get him geared up. I guess we could talk to these guys about the quest. Or we could get attacked. Um, I still don't feel confident. I'm still... I could probably handle him, but I don't know I could handle him, so I'm still going to be running from fights. Quest. There is a scholar at the Great Cathedral who's an expert on the Ring of Division. He can tell you a great deal about it. Yeah, well, I mean, cool. <coughs> We're going to pass through Cathedral here shortly. Um, <coughs> the whole second floor of Cathedral is just this obnoxiously large square with a bunch of um, bookshelves. And as you're searching the bookshelves, you'll find notes and papers that are hints to unlocking the different rings. And I think every single ring, there's like a priest that you go there and talk to them and they'll give you your first hint on how to find that ring. And that's how you basically kick off each of your quests. So welcome. So these, as you can see, the spells get really expensive. These are like, this is the master level spell. And these are level 9 spells. So these are the, the big boy spells. I could sell some stuff and then buy this, but there's no point yet. Um, other than to just be able to like see it on my list and you know feel good about myself. Um, so we're not going to bother shopping there. What do you got for me, Britta? He's charging 13 food, 9 water. And he charges... Okay, so he's going to be our slightly cheaper they don't always have the same prices obviously um so he went through a lot i'm gonna do some quick math here instead of counting in my head and just decide that i'm gonna need to spend like 1800 gold here maybe i won't spend the full 1800 See how our inventory looks now. Oh, maybe I, maybe I messed up my math a little bit there. <laughs> hmm. As I was doing it, I'm like, this is taking longer than I feel like it should. I think I was supposed to spend like 180. Yeah, I was supposed to spend 180 gold, not 1800. So. We'll just drop this down to about 500. That'll leave us enough for the other spell I want to buy. And then we'll replenish our money in the next town. Yeah, it's about perfect. All right. All right. Never be too careful. And then... And this guy sells cleave and knives. So the way the um, knight works is they have they have their pure damage spells, and then these spells that are like cleave and divide and those types of spells. You're, you're going to notice thematic links between the different spell names. Those spells don't do damage per se. They reduce the max HP of an enemy. So the way they work is like if you're fighting a character that can heal then that's a good ability to use because it prevents them from healing their allies back up to full health. But in a normal fight, it's not very useful. Knives doesn't honestly do a lot. Um, I'm actually wondering, do I even want to buy it? I feel like Knives summons four daggers that do two damage each. Um, but your normal stab does like four damage per hit. So I'm gonna buy it, but I have a feeling that this spell is not worth the money. Um, not all spells are worth the money, so. Alright, so that being said, actually I'm going to duck into this house. Don't pay attention to me. Um, we're going to call this chapter th chapter 2, and then it's 11.20 now, so it's actually been longer than I thought it had been. We'll call this chapter 2, and then I'll probably do chapter 3 either tomorrow morning as part of my random jam, or just some point during the day, and we'll just kind of feel it out as we go. So, yeah. Did I save before? I don't know, but I'm going to save again. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it, even with that little bit of weirdness with Rashid, the 
bastard that took my 30 gold and didn't tell me nothing. Um, so until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and yeah, later.